Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process and for authors to learn valuable tips on producing and marketing your audiobooks. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Hello, and thank you for joining me. Today, we're going to talk about what to do and how to deal with the situation of having tables in your audiobook. If you have tables in your book, you may be thinking you need to omit them in the audio. But before you do that, you should ask yourself a few questions. First of all, does the table provide information that will be valuable to the reader that is not already also contained in the text? If so, I'm going to encourage you to include some version of the table, and we'll get into the details of how that might look in just a bit. The second question you should ask is, what additional information are you trying to communicate by including that table? If it's statistics or trends or patterns, we're going to have a different kind of approach to the table itself than if it is text content. When I refer to text content, what I'm talking about is a situation where we may have, for example, a table that is included in the Banish Burnout book by Janice Litvin, and that is two columns. The first column is current stress and past memory. The second column heading is reality spin. In this case, there are just two columns and the content of each cell within that table is text rather than numbers. The third question I'd like you to ask yourself is, might the listener benefit from both hearing the content and being able to see it on a page of your website? Most often, the answer to that third question is going to be yes. So before you think of shortchanging your followers that chose the audio format, give them some bonuses instead. Those bonuses can be the information within the audiobook, but also that invitation to the website where you're going to give them the visual table that they would have received if they'd purchased a text format book, so either a print or an ebook. When your listeners show up and visit you on your website, that of course will benefit both you and them, or it should. When they come to your website, they should be ready to engage in your client value journey's next step for them. Assuming that you have valuable content, that means they're going to get more benefit. And of course, for you, it should also become more valuable because them staying with you as one of your followers is going to benefit you, your books, and your business. It is at your website where they will be able to learn more about you, about your books, about any products and services that you offer, and they're much more likely to continue on with you in their client value journey. So let's get into how to deal with a table in your audiobook. First of all, we've talked about the value of having the table available on your website as a resource for at least your audiobook listeners, if not your other site visitors. So let's take a look at what to do if the table in your book is numbers. If you're trying to show statistics or trends or some kind of pattern, this is where you're going to come back to that question of what are you trying to convey? What is the information? What's the message? If, for example, you're trying to show how numbers double 
over a certain period of time or a pattern of increase or decrease, a kind of trend, then I want you to take that information, the information you're trying to convey with the visual and put it into a narrative. You can reference the fact that there is a table And I think that this has a lot of value because you want to let them know that it's available for them to see on your website, but then you want to communicate the information. We're just going to take a real short break now. We'll come right back and we're going to talk about how to read a table that is predominantly text-based. We'll be right back. Here at Pro Audio Voices, we love working with authors who have a big goal in mind. They really want to reach out to their audience around the world. We're here to help make that happen. It starts with our pre-production process, where we're evaluating and determining what elements of the audiobook we can leverage to both create an excellent listener experience for your listeners, as well as drawing them to your website to engage with you further. It continues on through the production process, making decisions that will enhance and support your big goals, as well as creating a great listener experience. But we don't stop there. Once the audiobook is live, we move on to helping you market your audiobook with the Audiobook Marketing Program. Come check us out at ProAudioVoices.com. To schedule a call to talk about your audiobook project, click on Get Started. Okay, let's get into how to read a table so that it stays clear for your listener. There are some different factors that are going to impact how we approach any particular text-based table. One of the first is how many rows are there and how many columns are there? If there are many columns and your narrator is going to read across the rows, it's going to be harder for your listener to keep track of which column we're in. Depending on the actual content in each of those cells, that may be easier or harder. It may be an issue or maybe it's not, but it's something that you need to think about. If there are a lot of rows then you want to make sure that you're setting your listener up such that they're going to be able to track, again, which column we're in as we go forward. Even if you only have a few columns, but if you have many, many rows, you're not going to want to repeat the header with each row. It would be annoying, quickly get tiring for the listener. But on the other hand, we don't want them to lose track of where we are. Of what, which column were we in? I don't remember. We don't want them to have to back up in the audio to be reminded of where we are. So it's, this is all about clarity in the listening experience. One way then to approach reading a table is you start off with reading the column heading across And then when you start on the rows, if you have a row header or title, then you would start with that. But then you can reference back to what the column heading is. If we go back to our example from Janice Litvin's Banish Burnout Toolkit, the header for the first column is Current Stress and Past Memory. So we would start there. And then we would read the text in the first cell. Sarah, I can't believe Karen wants to borrow my PowerPoint slides, etc. Okay, continuing on. We finished that bit of text, and then we would go to reality spin. And then we would read, Karen reminds me of, okay, and then we'd continue the text in that cell. In this particular example, there's a fair amount of text in each cell. Since the listener is following along with the content and the concepts, the ideas, 
they could very easily lose track of where we are as we move on to the next one. Remember, they don't have the visual in front of them to organize that information. So we need to help them out. So then as we move on to the next row, we would come back to the first header, read that, and then the text in that cell. And then as we move on to the second column, we read the header again, and then the text in that cell. And we move our way down through the table in this way. But again, coming back to that question of how many rows are there, this is going to help you determine whether you need to keep doing this for every single row or maybe just the first few rows. You want to set up a pattern that's clear for the listener without burdening them with hearing it every single time. And that's just a matter of balance and that is a subjective choice as well. Another thing you can do if you have several columns where it's going to be harder for the listener to track going down several rows, you can potentially, if you have long headers, you could shorten them to something that's going to feel a little more narrative. For example, many cases you might have something in cell one that's like the trigger, and then the second column is talking about what it leads to, sort of the result. So you might have X leads to Y, which results in the next column. So finding a path for the listener through that table can be really, really helpful and a great way to do them. And then another kind of different approach to the entire table is to convert the whole thing into a narrative of the content. Now, if you have a very conversational tone to your book, and especially if that tone is really important to you and the way that you want to engage with and interact with your listeners, then this last option may be the best for you. Just keep in mind that overall, whatever your choices are, whichever way that you approach dealing with this table, the main point is to help your listeners stay with you and not get lost. Because again, the listener experience needs to stay at the top of your priority list. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you have questions about tables, you can find me at proaudiovoices.com. Thanks again. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at proaudiovoices.com. Again, thanks for being with us, and please join us next week.